From out of the man cave and onto the air, it's your favorite voice of ecstasy. It's John St. John with the best morning after ever radio show. 30 some odd minutes of happenings, discussions, and full frontal nudity. So put your arms around your speakers. It's John St. John. Yes, it is John St. John. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Best Morning After Ever radio show. I am uh, enlightened to have all of my hosts with me today. Sometimes we don't have them in the in the uh, the lovely studio we use here over by the Portage Theater in Chicagoland. But today I have myself, of course, John St. John. And I have Gentleman G. Good morning. The governor. Good morning. And uh, to my right, the wonderful lady that actually helps get us here. So yeah. I can't get here without you anymore now. I'm dependent. Yeah, you're dependent. We're codependent. That well. Good morning, Miss Cindy we'll, Lou. We'll talk How are about you? That off air. Oh, yeah. We can talk about it on the air. Okay, I guess we could. We could. We could. You know, I'm just happy personal. to be here. So she's just, just, she always just says she's happy to be here. Happy to are be here. you happy to be here, gentlemen? Yeah. G? No, he's taking a nap over there. Yeah, I'm doing it good. Is pretty early. <laughs> yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's amazing, we got out of bed for this. Ah, uh, we did. And you know, we uh, we've been doing this kind of weird. We don't end up doing a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday show usually. I guess we'll get around to it one day. But we're doing uh, we're doing Wednesday through. I think the Wednesday Saturday through now. Saturday thing that is that enough? Works. Yeah, really? But, yeah, I mean, why why do Monday through Friday? This way we can you know what we can do. We can cover a little extra topics now because we know well, what happened on. I mean, if everybody Monday, else Tuesday. is doing Monday through Friday, you know, we got to be different. We got to be different. Yeah, so, we got to like, do let's Thursday through. Apart. Why don't we do Why don't we do Saturday to the following Friday? We'll do seven days, eight. If gentleman G can just hang out with us, maybe he'll just do this all. Yeah. Night, huh? all night long. Yeah, we're we're talking about how many shows we do. And it's, it's kind of weird that we start on Wednesday mornings now. I don't like get up this early. So you don't you, you can't make it on Monday morning. It's too early, right? Morning, rainy days and Mondays always make me down. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> we got some it, chick on the line, you said. Yeah, let's, we got. Let's, uh, we, let's we, to... Do we have her on the line? I don't know. She might have hung up already. Chick. <laughs> Is there a chick? Wait, who's running this show this morning? Huh? Ah, is there a chick? I was actually going to bring up the topic first, but but gentleman G, he likes talking to the ladies, so I'm not that. I don't know if is she's she there. there. No. Yeah, it's Flo. What's up, baby girl? Hey, Hi. what's up? It's our stalker. Hi. Good morning. You have a sexy voice. What are you doing up so early? Listening to you. Really? Yeah. Do you like us? Yeah. Who do you like better, me, Cindy Lou, or gentleman G? Uh, John St. John. Really? Yeah. Ooh. That's He's what they favorite. all say. What are you wearing this morning, honey? Uh, a t-shirt and an underwear. Ooh. What kind of panties? What kind? Yeah. Are they? Are they the real tight ones? No, those bikini ones. Are they bikini? Yeah. Oh, her butt's hanging out. Pink ones. <laughs> Ooh. I wonder if we're ever gonna run into our stalker. You know, we talked about this on another show actually, that we do here, and. uh you know, it's kind of funny. We joked about, are we uh, ever going to maybe date our, our stalkers? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't mm-hmm. know if I could handle it. Could I handle you? No. <laughs> no. I'm too damn horny to be handled. Nobody can handle me. Well, you know, we, we uh, gentlemen, G got a little excited when he heard he, we had our, our girl callers on the line. But we didn't even talk about our first subject of the day. Uh mm-hmm. Do you, uh, do you do you get all turned on by the guys when you hear Bill Cosby talk no, to you? No, I do not. I would like to talk to you. He's I can't annoying. do it well. But the Jello pudding pop. Anyway, he's got a problem with his pudding pop. <laughs> Jello G, you don't know about this? He's got a big problem with pudding pop. He's looking at me like someplace. I grew another head. You don't know this story? You've not heard about what's going he's on with Bill Cosby? Bill Cosby? I'm familiar with it, yes. Well, the no latest comment. the latest is the latest is that uh it, now he's got like 16 women have come come forward saying that you know, I guess uh you know, the cause first of all, Bill Cosby is highly respected. He's, you know, an educator. He's doctor. He's a doctor. He's Dr. William J. Cosby. But they said that that, that he's going to uh, that that they're going to pull it. Rutgers is going to pull it. So can you I mean, do that? I don't know. I mean, how do you get to be a not a doctor re- when you're wait, already a doctor? Yeah, how do you reverse a doctorate I mean, degree? Well, I don't know. I just happen to get one, you know. You, wow. you, it, that you are the rev. That's right. That's right. The so, reverend. Wait, what do we call you again? The reverend Dr. Cindy. That's the reverend right. Dr. Cindy um, Lou. Reverend so, Dr. Amen. Cindy Lou. <laughs> are you ta- hallelujah. Are you taking course, over for the reverend? Co- well, he's not a reverend. Be, he's Dr. I'd be Cosby. more than happy to. I mean, I'm the next civil rights leader of our time. And, and uh, 
Really? You know. You're bringing us together? I- I'm going to bring us all together by telling you how worthless y'all are. <laughs> Well, listen, it's not, I don't think, it, this has off. nothing to do with race or anything. It just has to do with, I felt like, uh, you know, one of my childhood heroes is being attacked for no reason. But when Janice Dickinson, who's a little nutty, you know, she used to be a, I think, Playboy model. I know she was a model. Yeah. I don't know if it was Playboy or. No, just a supermodel. No, nah, it was some other, it was a magazine. And then, then she had too much work done on her face. Yo, oh, my God. So now she looks kind of She looks nasty. like a man. Right. A man, an old man at, at that. Yeah, which is not cool. Cause so anyway, she uh, is now the latest one to come across saying that, uh, I guess, I don't know, in like 1982 here, I got to pull up the story. In 1982, Bill Cosby, uh, I don't know, he brings her. Well, here what's what, I don't, what doesn't make any sense. First of all, they're all pretty much saying the same story. So I'm like, this sounds like a setup. It really does. But, you know, if a university is taking you off the board, possibly... St- you know, taking away your your doctorate degree. I mean, that's well, the serious honorary shit. doctorate, and that's that's no, 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 no. He actually is a doctor. I, Maybe not from Rutgers. Really? No, no, he is. Because I know he's gotten some honorary ones around. No, there. no, no. He's been a because uh, even on the Cosby Show, in the end, the credits it says Doctor William H. Cosby well, I Jr. I know, but that's just one of those things that a lot of people just like to put up. Are you trying to tell me that you're not really a Reverend Doctor Cindy uh, Lou? Are you telling me I, that you're not a Reverend Doctor? Well, you, you'll never know, but because you know, I mean, they I, lost I like my, the advice you give. They whenever lost you my give transcripts. It. They did. You know, at the at the college, they lost you know, my transcripts. I've had that problem. I don't myself. know where my original birth certificate is either. either so I, I cannot you know, find out. my bachelor's degree anywhere. I know what you're saying. Yeah. So anyway, uh, but, but, and but flow. You, you can't find your bachelor's degree, but you, you you can find that student loan payment book, right? I well, found the found student us. loan payment book. You know, yeah. I tried to I tried to lose that one. And it keeps coming back. They get, they send you another copy next month. Oh, by the way, you owe us more money. And you know, you know what? You cannot declare bankruptcy on those things. No. Nope. So those are not monthly greetings that those they're are, sending you. They, no, those no, are not. Those are. They don't want to just check on your well-being. Those, if you're playing Monopoly, those are like go directly to jail tickets. You know. Right. Yeah. No good. But anyway, so Aunt Flo, uh, you don't, you're not into the cause. Huh? You never were. You didn't like. No, the, I always thought he was phony. There was. Something he was hiding something. Well, that's it's what everybody keeps talking about in the media. That well, no, I just knew. I've just heard stuff in the eighties about he, he was too squeaky drug rehab and stuff. He was too. Oh, squeaky he wasn't clean. all that squeaky clean. He was here, a hypocrite. Here, it didn't happen until like two thousand four or five that he settled some lawsuits. So it's not right. like it's been going on for forty years. It just happened. No, well, according to a lot of people, it was, but. He's been doing this a long time. I don't know. Janice Dickinson said, I just read the article, it was 1982. Not Dickinson, the other, like, cocktail waitresses and stuff like that. But what, Random girls he'd be. What I was going to say is, what's weird is the story's kind of the same. They think that Mr. Cosby can help them with, you know, give advice and, and right. maybe get a job in the entertainment they business. Him. And they end up coming back to his apartment. Why, why are they going to his hotel or apartment? I, I would not feel comfortable doing that. I don't care who it is. Like, if Dee Snyder... Uh, invited me. He's in town for his play that I want to see. Anyway, if D. Snyder invited me to his room, I don't think I would go. If it was his office, if it was his, you know, a professional environment where there's other people, I, I would be okay. But anyway, I don't These understand. Women said they trusted Cosby, though, because he was a trusting guy. I mean, he had that image. Well, I, I, my favorite is when he did picture pages. Remember everybody well, when he did picture pages? Well, it was probably had a lot to do with the sweaters. Governor, you got to remember picture pages when you're a kid, right? I never watched Channel 11. <laughs> I don't think it was just on Channel 11. I thought it was well, like yeah, NBC he did, he did in the mor- Saturday morning. Was it? Was it? A, no, was it public? Did. WDTW in Chicago. Was that? But was that all tied in with Fat Albert and stuff like that? No, Fat Albert. I know was on that a came, network. That came later. <laughs> yeah, he, he is right. That you know, <laughs> he did the voice of Fat Albert. Yeah, I know he did. He produced the show. I think he, he did a lot of the drawing the show. too. I don't know about the artwork. Well, I don't know. You mean he's a cartoonist too? Uh, I mean, he might have been, because I think I remember seeing him with the pen and the paper or something like that. No, that's picture pages, picture pages, lots of fun with picture pages. Wasn't that's what in, I'm talking about. Wasn't he in Mother Jugs and Speed? No. no. <laughs> Jeez, you're getting everything mixed up. Anyway, so it's kind of a weird Letter story. Letter Part it's, 6. It's been, oh, that movie was the worst <laughs> ever. I'm surprised Richard Gordon didn't talk about, uh, uh, and any of these reviews he's had, he didn't talk about Leonard Part 6 ever. Actually, this weekend at the Portage Theater, they're going to be having a live review of Rev- Rev- uh, Leonard Part 6. Uh, Do you know that that was a play? They yeah, turned it into yes, a play, actually? They, how scary is that? How, they should have turned it into a play a long time ago. Why was it called Leonard Part 6 anyway? I don't know, because nobody knew where that happened to the other five parts. <laughs> okay, this is, uh, there, I'm trying to think of some other movies where they name, like, out of order like that. <laughs> Chevy Chase, I think that no, that's Fletch lives. That's that's. Well, well look at look at the biggest one of them all, Star Wars. Yeah, but they still episode four. They still well, 
that's because they knew that the books were one through three. See, that's the, the, the back story there is there were books that George Lucas, well, I don't know, he, adopted he, somehow. Well, yeah, later, though. Yeah, later. He just threw it all in the beginning. So, oh, I, I guess I guess that's a good point. They Similar out to Leonard order. Part 6, Star Wars 4 is really Star Wars 1. I got you, I got you. But it's really not, because if you if you look at the new movies, they talk about what happens before, you know. Right, but it was Episode 4. Exactly. Star Wars right. 1 was Episode 4. I got you. Star Wars 2, Episode 5. And I guess it's the same thing as Leonard Part 6 was actually Leonard Part 6. So there might be Leonard Part 2, which would actually be Leonard Part 4, maybe, yeah, or 5. Or, or 1, who knows. But anyway, so the cause is in a bit of trouble. Yeah. bit of trouble. bit of trouble. And it's been all over the news. I mean, they just don't shut up about it. He's in People magazine. He's, he's in Star. He's in all the British magazines, like Look All Them, whatever. I'm like, man, it's just it's kind of a shame. I mean, I hate to see a, a, a respectable person, you know, get raked over the coals. But I guess when right. you're in, in uh, the entertainment business, you, you can have... That happened, you know. You're putting yourself out there for it. Hey, you happen, you so. know what? You never know when it's time to stop partying. That's all I can say. Ah, yes, yes, that's true. That's another topic we're going to be uh, oh, discussing here in a moment. That's funny. He's Boy, he's my new producer. Gentleman G is on top of his game this morning. You, you were yawning earlier, but now he's awake. Yeah, yeah so uh, I mm. don't know if Bill Cosby partied. Well, apparently with these ladies he partied too much. I think there was a lot of partying going on. Uh, you then. know, and you know what? I think that might be what it is. I really you do. Know, but I it think wasn't it, it was a mutual thing, and now all of a sudden it's not. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, there was such a... 20 years later. He put on that wholesome image, though. You know, yeah. and he, he's always getting in trouble for, for telling the people in his community, you know, it's like, you know, pull your pants up and, you know, just commonsensical things, really. But Yeah, he went, he's done on lectures where he's yelling at the kids. Right, he, right. Says, he says, you know, we didn't, we didn't have names like Jamal. You know, our, our, the kids down the street named were Sam and Ted, you know, because yeah. he remembers a different time. Yeah. And... Uh, that was the '60s and '70s, I guess. Right, and I, I think you know he kind of was. What, what was he in? He that. was in. He was in I Spy. He was in the Bill Cosby. Uh, you know the the Cosby Kids with um, the Cosby Show. I should well, say. Well, he was in the Cosby me. Show. Yeah, the Cosby Show. He was in. He was in Fat Albert. Picture pages on everybody saying it was on Channel Eleven. I remember being on the network. I thought on Saturday, but maybe not. So it was on uh, PBS. I should say Channel Eleven Chicago. But anyway, so that's that. Uh, and I guess to be continued because it still hasn't ended then then of course in all the all of the uh in, like inquire and all the magazine they're showing you know the articles about his wife is divorcing him and i'm like yeah whatever i'm sure that's all bull they've been married like 50 years well where's so, she gonna go i don't think it's an issue of where she's gonna go it's yeah, like yeah. are you gonna stand by your man you know do a little tammy uh, Wynette yeah, I, I, or hillary clinton for that matter you should you know because it's worked out so well for yeah. hillary so it worked out really well for hillary yeah well they are still married at least in the media, yeah, married. that's all. Uh, but anyway, so uh, and, and gentleman G mentioned something we're going to uh, talk about next, and it's I like to talk about cool like relationship stuff, but I just you know, it was in the news, and it's kind of a big deal with relationships. I mean, he's by the way, I forgot to mention a lot of the women that are alleging this are actually of a different race. They're not mm -hmm. they're not black women. Some are, a couple of them were. Yeah, a but, couple of them are. But most of them are white. Uh huh. Yeah. So. He's I don't know. Going outside. Uh, you just, just throwing it out there. I have no well, idea. Well, I mean, that's kind of that, you know. But anyway, he likes to party too much, and yeah. so does, apparently, so do millennials. That's the thing for the kids now. They never know what? when to stop. They'll party five days a week. Well, I, I like Thursday to party five through Monday. Days, you know, well, week, you're not a millennial. Yeah. A millennial is you're someone that was older. born when? Right. That's a good question. Uh, I would I would define we'll it as report. being born in the late '90s. Well, '90s or, the, or the later. The millennials were born around around. Uh, the, the right now, they would be you know 90s. 17, so 18, 21 in that range. Okay. Yeah. So late they're 90s. just becoming of age right now. Yeah. Like well, they're turning 21 right now. And what does the story say? Well, I'm going to get to the story. Okay. But now I can't find the story. Uh oh. Uh, anyway, if they were born in 2000, no, if they were born, they would be 14 right now. So yeah, they no, would, it had to be before that. It's not. Yeah, it's not. No, millennials are considered kids that are, like I said, in their late 90s. They call them millennials because they're, at this point, they're in their 20s and their 30s and their party and their right. But they weren't 90s. born in in the 100s though. In the 1900s, you mean? No, yeah. in, in the 2000s or whatever. No, no, that doesn't well, mean no, they were born. They'd only be 14 right now. Yeah, they would right. only be 14. I mean, actually, those are still considered millennials. Right, right but I'm saying, what would we, would, is it saying that our article yeah. no, when it would start off I, as? Well, basically, it's just talking about how the sad generation uh, 
doesn't know when to party and when to stop. So uh, basically, it's te- here it is. It's right in the damn thing. Why don't I just read the article, huh? Teenagers, 20-somethings, 30-somethings. So there's your answer. Anybody born, like, 1985 on up would be considered a millennial. So because they're if really you're in talking your 30s, you're born in, what is that, 84? Right? Yeah. God, I'm getting old. Yeah. Did we say how old we are? No, no. no, those are Gen Xers. No, Gen Xers. No, Gen Xers are us. Gen Xers people that are born in, in the seventies. Yeah. Then what's the Gen Y or what's the next one? Well, I that, have no that's idea. technically Gen Y because I think Gen Y goes. So then, when does the millennium the, cut in? I, I'm, I'm not. I just told you twenties and thirties. So it's a good question. It's all a very confusing thing, but. So know. twenty but years ago from now would be. Ninety-four, right? Yeah, 20 right. years would be 94. But I guess the big but That would be the Gen, Gen Wire guys, right? Uh, the the I, trail you know, end of I, it, yeah. I guess it is, but what happened to... Ge- Wait, isn't there a Gen... X, Y... No, there is no Z, right? It goes X, Y, and then Millennial? No, see, I think what I figured... I think I read this someplace, that, that Gen X is <laughs> typically from, from about 1960 to 1975. They go on about 15 You're just making it up as we go. We love no, to just make shit up I, on this, this show. Is, this has <laughs> been written so The best morning after ever radio show just makes everything <laughs> up, and it sounds funny. Yeah. Let's, let's get Here, I'm trying to find the article here. Because I was under the impression that the Gen Y were the guys in the 90s born. See, I always thought that, too, but, even, I mean, the article here. Yeah. I'm going to click on the actual, the whole article. We'll read the damn thing. I'm trying to give the summary and see what everybody thinks about it, but if you guys want to get technical. Yes, we were technical this morning. And it, and it first appeared on, on Vice, by the way, very popular online. Ma- and and Miami? they actually do a show on cable. Miami? No, Vice. Is it Miami Just Vice? the Vice. Oh. Yeah, no, not Miami Vice. Millennials wouldn't, wouldn't understand Millennials that because it wasn't a that crappy movie hell. with Colin Farrell. Yeah, no, it was not. No, this Colin is Farrell's not in it. It's, it's uh, Or actually it is. It's Colin Farrell. And, yeah, uh, I'm talking about the old school one. I'm thinking of Bad Boys, not Miami Vice. Don Johnson and Philip Michael Thomas. No, but I'm thinking of Bad Boys. I'm thinking of the wrong movie. But anyway, um... Okay, so here's the deal. Let's hear it. The idea of living for the weekend is nothing new. Obviously, we all partied, you know. But the history of what we call the youth culture is really just a history of young people being un- unable to rec- uh, reconcile. I don't know why I'm sucking on an ice cube right now. Sorry. Anyway, the youth culture is really just a history of young people being unable to reconcile their day-to-day lives with their social life, finding solace in the tribal rights of a Saturday night and workless morning rather than careers, kids, and whatever. So basically, you know, this generation, and I'll just say this generation because I can't find the year on here, uh, is just they don't want to have families. I feel like I'm a millennial. What are you trying to find, generation? What generation? The millennial generation. Yeah, what's the millennial generation? Millennials are uh, typically the 80s through the mid-2000s. Yeah, see? Yeah. Are you happy now, Generation, generation Z? That's what was the basically the, the, the same thing. That's three people telling So you. millenniums are Generation Y. Millennials are Generation Y, yes. And then Generation ah. X starts when? Hey, wh- uh, Mid-60s. Where was he a minute ago? We were just asking, and here he's got right. the, our producer's got the answer. He knows all. He's the omniscient. See, what's the, the, the lost Kingpin. generation was the de- Depression Yeah. In, in the early 1900s. Then the baby boomers are the 40s. No, the, gra- the greatest generation was the World War II generation. The, the baby boomers, right? And the ba- baby boomers are after the greatest after generation. Them. Oh, okay, greatest generation, and then, then the baby Gen boomers. And then Gen X came after that. And then the Generation boomers. X came after that, and now we're... Well, then, then there's the millennials, and now there's gener- there's technically a Generation Z, which I d- is... I don't know anything about They're this. like the babies today. Here. The the generation Z is like the last 10 years. The whole point of the thing is that the... the and, it's, and I think it has to do with the economy, is people are not having settling down with a career. They're not settling down with a family. They're just out going partying in Vegas all night, which, I'll be honest, I, I, I like living that lifestyle. You know, you know what and they I'm in said my about, that, about that is that... What? Back like the baby boomer age, they were. It's like they were happy to work, to do work, and you know, do all. Uh, you know, it, it was all about getting out, getting a job, and getting on your own. My, my parents still work like fifteen hours a week, so I know all about it. X a day, was I mean. raised on reach for your dreams, reach high, reach far. You know. Well, you have to go to college. You have to, go to get a career. And the whole thing is, obviously, just like the generations before, a lot falls short. But now everyone feels unfulfilled. Yeah, well, I feel unfulfilled. 
And I'm I'm the millennial, I guess. No, well, I'm Generation X. I don't think there's just so much. There's not there's not a whole lot of opportunity these days for for the younger. I don't generation. know what happened. Um, I took a wrong turn. I could have been a, well, a I mean, construction the, the, the guy working with crash my dad. Doesn't doesn't help either. Right. The economy being what it is is not helping. That's, and that's a whole other topic. We're basically becoming another well, lost generation. They, they've grown up with technology. I mean, we're well, here. Look, we're going to take a quick break, and we're yeah. going to cover this when we get back. Right here on the best morning after ever. I saw Sparks last night. She finally showed me her favorite website. It made my jaw drop at first glance. We had the wildest time together, ordering from the erotic shop, and I'd have to say, thesparkmaker.com lived up to its name. And now, I have plans to surprise her. I'll show her something she hasn't seen. Thank you, thesparkmaker.com. Don't miss him any longer. John St. John is back to fill your ears with his goodness on the best morning after ever radio show. John? The studio is falling apart here. Hey, we're back on the best morning after ever radio show with John St. John, our special co-host, guest co-host who usually comes in or he's on the phone. Gentleman G, the governor, who's getting all technical about the age of everybody. I just wanted to find out who they was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But no, it's serious, though. It's a serious topic. But And then, of course, Cindy Lou is here. And you were saying something before the break about uh, basically, you know, the problem. And then and then Kingpin was talking about the economy crashing. So it's a whole other topic kind of right. related to this. Well, I mean, I guess I can understand why that the... the, the the millennial generations, those that are a little bit younger than than we are, per se, uh, per se are, are, like are going out there and and per you know se. just living their life vicariously and partying and having a good time because apparently there's no responsibility. Jobs are hard to come by. Everybody's living uh, at home with their parents. A lot of people I know are living at home with their parents. And, you know they they you? they've grown up in a different time. Than, hey, than we still got our call. I didn't even did. know you're you still with us, Aunt Flo? My stalker yeah. is still on. Oh, okay. So where are you at with this whole uh, millennial thing? Well, I have a daughter that's going to be 19 next month, and she's not a partier at all. She goes to college. Wait a minute. So she's bucking the trend. She's actually responsible. Yeah, yeah. she's a smart kid. Really? Yeah, she's kind of a nerd geek. Are you, are you, a, are you a smart kid? Do you like, do you like to no, be a good girl? No, I was at that age. <laughs> do, you, do you wear the short skirts and, the, and you know, the, the Catholic well, school girl outfit? Well, in my 20s. Yeah. Not, wow. not now, but in my 20s. So, but you weren't a partier either? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I was a partier. Well, she got a kid. Obviously, she was a partier. Yeah, you know, no, that's true, actually. Having a kid that's studious like that, that is an accomplishment. Well, no, I'm though. saying now. Yeah. Is she a partier now? I, I feel like I'm still living the millennial lifestyle. Living no, in my parents' uh, basement. Me? Me or my daughter? I don't know what you're talking about. I would, you know, I mean, I No, would. you and your daughter. Everybody. I'm I talking about everybody. I, I'm kind of a square head. I did have a drink on uh, Thanksgiving, but that's it. Well, I, 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 woo, fun. <laughs> she's wild. You know, I throw a party for your daughter. You know, yeah. because she's so, she sounds C- so studious. Cindy Lou would like to party so, with your daughter. You know, we're gonna get, oh, we're gonna get her a bottle she's of Jack no Daniels <laughs> and maybe a couple <laughs> joints. I'll call up you. some strippers. Hey, <laughs> wait a minute, I know we're not uh, as restricted as the main networks here, but I don't know if we want to be talking about pot. Okay. Oh no, she's <laughs> way against drugs. It's actually legalized in Illinois, ain't it now for medical? And we all need. Mm-hmm. So I think we're all a little crazy over here. We're all crazy in Chicago. That's a reference to good old Johnny B. Skipper? Oh, don't you know? Don't you know, baby? Man, that's a, that's old. That song is uh, when the millennials were born. That song came out. See, like, they were. I remember that. Uh, eighty-two. Oh, it was eighty-six. No, it wasn't. It was eighty-two or eighty-three. And then he 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 did like a video for it in eighty-six. Oh, okay. I didn't know it was that old. Mm-hmm. Jonathan Brandmeier was on the air in Chicago for like, I don't know. 80, like, 82, 83, all the way to the late 90s. That. Then he was off the air. He went to L.A., came back, and then he just got off the air again. He just recently got off the air. Well, they closed the station now. Yeah, they basically closed on him. <laughs> they closed the damn station. Did I guess that's how you get rid of Johnny B. You closed the Did station. Did his whole station get the flu? <laughs> his whole station got the flu permanently. <laughs> <laughs> that's WGN-FM for people online who want to look it up. And find out who Johnny B is. But anyway, so the bottom line is, uh, you know, the lifestyle is definitely, uh, and, and, you know, Kingpin was talking about it. You know, you got the people before World War II that d- experienced the depression, and they'll work, their, they'll work their asses off, you know, 20 hours a day, right. 24 hours a day if they have to, seven days a week. 
Yeah. Then you got the World War II generation who was, uh, you know, obviously had to be responsible for fighting a world war. Then you got the baby boomers who I think carried on that whole. They had the the bebop stuff from the fifties yeah, and the Bobby Yeah, but they were the beginning Sox. of that that whole me generation. And, I was going to say they kind of started with the hippie stuff. They've but done more to screw us over. Than yeah, but they were still else, responsible. I mean, my parents worked uh, sixteen hour days. Yeah, and they're supposed to be retired. Well, I, I guess there was you know there there's the the, the you know leading the, duh, duh. the no the the, like what? the the leading edge of the the baby boom generation and the uh, trailing edge and I think the trailing edge is more the you know the hippie thing and. You know the the whole uh, topic. Uh, that's a whole other topic we can yeah. we can bring up uh, another show. But you know what the the hippies were right. A Ooh. lot of them are kids of the CIA agents and and military generals, and it was all like a conspiracy to they get the were. government, like an anti government thing. It was a plot. I know I'm getting way off the topic. You think I'm so? Sorry. No, not think so. There's like proven stuff. Oh. So, I just thought Jim Morrison's old. dad was a general. Yeah. Obviously, we know Jim Morrison from but the doors. No, his father was like an Indian shaman. Well, that's in the movie. Well, that's what I think what Jim Morrison used to think too. Yeah, I think he probably did. <laughs> I don't know. I guess he died, and didn't he? Is he one of the stars that that ended up like choking on his vomit? No, that was uh, uh, that was Jim Janis Hendrick. Joplin, wasn't it? I think that was Jimi Hendrix. Uh, Hendrix. Yeah. Uh, Wait, what, what did Janis Joplin do? Heroin. Heroin, and I think uh, so did uh, so did Jim Morrison. I think mm-hmm. he did heroin. And that's why he was naked in the bathtub. I just remember the movie. You're mixing the movie with real life, damn it. Although Oliver Stone makes a reference to the military conspiracy thing at the beginning of the movie, you got to see the movie again. Right. So anyway, what? Back to Which the story. Movie? We all like to party all night long. I, I, My girl I know likes to party, party all the time. Every day. I know a gentleman G likes to sing karaoke till four in the morning. Mm. We've been with him a few times. We're going this Saturday. Mm. Oh, by the way, we're going this Saturday. We are. Yeah. Well, how come I wasn't invited? Well, you're being invited on the air, so well, now you got to go. Other things to do. Well, it's too late. I you're might have to go see the what, return of Winger. And then what about the Friday thing? She's not invited to that. Oh, that's karaoke on live on the air with uh, with our kingpin boss over here. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. okay, that I'll be at. You will be on uh, the air. Yeah. I'll oh, you want to sing on the air, but you don't want to sing with us at the bars. Well, no, I mean I might come out on. I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet. Cause, I don't know. Cause, cause, cause well, like the I invitation said, isn't up there all along. You either take it or you don't. Yeah, you either well, take it or leave it. Okay, because. Right. Well, all right, I got to think about either you guys or Kip Winger. You guys. Oh, Kip, Kip Winger. Wing, man. Hey, so, gentlemen, right, G, we're going to have Gators. to go see Kip I Winger. I don't know. I think we're all going to have to go see Kip Winger. Kip Winger, man, Gators. out in the suburbs, so, out of tailgaters, Gators, where Man Cow like to go all the time. The I return mean, keep, keep of Winger. talking about that guy. I don't know who that is. You don't know who Man Cow is? Oh, you need no. to loosen up. So, yeah. Okay, fine. I guess we don't have to talk about other. I, I'm sorry. It brought up Johnny B and Man Cow. What, am I going to get fired now or something? Man Cow is? He knows who Man Cow is. He's just being a shit. We, we're trying to promote ourselves. You get it? We're not supposed right. to talk about the other famous no, people, I guess. No, we don't want to, you know. I don't care. I can reference. Stern, Stern, Stern. Howard Stern, Wing, Howard so Stern, Winger, Howard Stern. The guy from Winger's let's, performance let's talk about what Let's talk about what James St. James Wait, has been doing lately. Do, do you know that Yeah, <laughs> James St. James hanging out with Larry, uh, or excuse me, Gentleman <laughs> G, the governor, and Larry is producer. And we got two, what do we got, two minutes? Got two minutes. What's everybody holding up to? Are you the peace sign? Are you a hippie now, too? Oh, you got long we hair. are saying. <laughs> See, they're, they're kidding us Give out. peace a chance. Boy, we're partying in the studio, for Christ's sake. Well, do we have two minutes left of the show? I think we do. We have two minutes left of the show. Well, hey, Aunt Flo, it was nice uh, hanging out with you for the whole show for once. Mm-hmm. She's kind of yeah. a quiet stalker. We, we, should, uh, we should meet her at the Kip Winger concert. I'll feel safe over there. Kip will protect us. Oh boy! Right, you know. Well, she let me ask you this silly question about this Kip Winger contest or whatever you're doing. No, yeah. it's not a con. You don't know who Kip Winger is. Kip Winger, Winger is. the band, the band Winger <laughs> from the '80s. They had one song. We're talking song. about millennials. They had one song. They had like six songs that yeah. were. Yeah, they had more than one. Seventeen and yeah. what else? What else? Shit! I'm what else? Think right there you 17. go. Easy I come, can't easy think go. of all of them. for a heartbreak. Thank Miles you. Away. See, my stalker Easy knows. come, easy go. Easy there come, go. easy go. There you, go. there you go. What time does that concert go to? Oh, we have no idea. It's, I know it's Saturday. Do we but get it's tickets? On Saturday. Are we getting tickets? We're media uh, people or what? Uh, I don't know. Press we should, passes? We need to get some press passes, though. We actually can. They we got to arrange that through the station so. in the city, but we can get yeah. them. We actually okay. can get them. Now, whether or not they're going to accept them at tailgaters over in Bolingbrook, well, I, I mean, don't I know. Could, I could make us press passes yeah, on right. my computer, press. but I don't know if that's going to help. We'll be like us. the Stooges. <laughs> Curly comes in with the pole from the. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, everybody, uh, you've been listening to a crazy show here on the Best Morning After Ever. We, we've been sharing uh, the millennial generation party 
exactly. uh, affair with our stalker, Aunt Flo, and with, of course, Gentleman G, the governor over there, and, and Cindy Lou, and, oh. and John I know St. where John. you're going to be Saturday night. Yeah, Ooh. see, now she's going to be stalking us over there. Hey, everybody, have a good morning, and uh, keep listening. Trust me, we do do... We do have better shows. Do do. We do do. We they're do not, do after we do this better, show. Though. No. I think we got a do do all over the show. <laughs> it's no, it was all right. Brutal. It was all right. Yeah, we talked a little guys. We talked a little partying. We had a stalker. And we all sound like we're drunk. It all makes sense. In the <laughs> we're end. going to Winger. <laughs> we're going karaoke in on uh, Friday with Kingpin over there. So, hey, everybody, just keep listening. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter. Blog Talk Radio, Lib Sync. Where else are we at? I t- well, we're not on iTunes yet. We're working on it. YouTube. We got YouTube clips up there. So just look for yeah. my beautiful face and Cindy's and Gentleman G's when he's here. You're sexy. See? We're sexy. All right. Over on uh, the best that. morning after ever radio show on Slam Internet Radio, of course, and Spreaker. Everybody have a good night and morning and day and whatever, and uh, we'll see you on Thursday. <laughs>